they were sitting at number one basically forever. Yeah, but we'll have to see whether they can make that journey to number one for the World Championships 2024. And who is going to go up against Onik Rise next? But, Chef, we're going to head on into our band phase here. That's right. It's time to see what's going to be highly valued. And basically, I think Japan has had some pretty unique choices of that Mimic U being a high band from Fennel throughout the entire weekend. I would say it's pretty interesting. We have seen Mimic U do quite well. Nouns was doing well with it recently, but to be first ban often over and over, I want to see it pop off at some point. We're not going to see that this time, of course. Oh, we're going to lock in the blaze again. Oh, Hooper ban as well. Uh -huh. So three all rounders, the supporter. It'll be interesting to see what Talon prioritize as their first pick here. There are so many good options with how this draft has gone. I like that going with the Umbreon, that uh, I've talked about it before, it really does not show what your strategy is going to be. It shows zero direction. You can play as a support Umbreon, you can play as a tank Umbreon. We saw Top Path Brawler Umbreon earlier, kind of, in a weird way. On the other side, though, we are going to be very first picking the Leafeon, which is still quite good. Uh, when there's some other scary options like Serilege still on board, though, I'm surprised that we're seeing it so early alongside that Blissey. Yeah, prioritizing those evolutions, but it looks like we're going to answer back with a Mew. Now, we actually saw earlier, I believe it was Fennel that had that support Mew, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, so taking that away and locking in the Charizard as well. Well, I do believe we're most likely going to be seeing an actual attacker Mew, but that's a lot of damage. The Charizard is, once again, one of the high priority picks currently. Serral Edge, though, really not being picked, uh, and they're just kind of ignoring it. Uh, I'm curious as to what their exact priority is. I don't think I've seen most of the Japanese teams play it all that much. Tone did play it, I believe, and it went really well, but we're going to see the Slowbro picked up, which has been picked up more and more as the tournament has gone on, I feel. Yeah, it wasn't very popular in the beginning, but I guess you just can't go wrong with a slow beam, especially when that Charizard is up in the air with their Unite move. That's one of the moves that can stop it in its tracks. Yes, uh, the, the weird rock, paper, scissors of now unstoppable Unite moves that stop moves that mm. are also stopping unstoppable moves is strange, but oh, the Talon Flame coming in. This is a pick that I really, really like. It's been picked up a lot less recently, but oh, also the Serena. Yeah, so another lockdown character with their Unite moves, so just lockdowns all around. But can we just say, Talon playing Talon Flame? This is meant That's to true. be. That is absolutely true. There is no Fennel Pokemons. So they can't return in kind, <laughs> but you gotta love it. You know, they, they're, they're going for branding. But no, I think Talon Flame is still quite strong if it has the right targets. And I'm assuming it's gonna be going a lot for that Espeon. I just like it in general, though, still as a kind of a speedster. We don't see too many speedsters, though, I would say, recently, or at least being played as speedsters. Sometimes we see them playing a little bit more as a brawler, but interesting comps on both sides. A few Pokemon that we're not seeing that are commonly being picked, no Cramorant, no Serral Edge, no, I feel like there's one more, but I can't think of it. There's still just a lot of interesting picks overall. And I guess this isn't the time to really experiment here. So Lance potentially going in for a comfort pick. So I'm really interested to see how this actually works in favor, considering they don't have that much of a backline besides that Umbreon. I mean, yes, a fly could potentially land down on that Leafeon, considering it is quite squishy, but Leafeon also just has maneuverability to move out of that move. It's true. It might also be uh, trying to get rid of that Blissey, but again, there's only one way to find out. We're in the top eight here at Worlds, and it's time to see who will be moving on to the top four. First match of Talon on the left, Fennel on the right. Yeah, we're actually going to see that Charmander take that central area for Talon, and Talon taking that top path there. Uh, it looks like Blissey and Slowpoke are going to take this red buff or just help them along the way. Uh, Slowpoke actually ends up taking that, an interesting one. Yeah, that's uh, gonna be uh, kind of annoying, honestly. We are gonna see the no EXP share Slowbro, by the way. Tone almost undoubtedly playing the Scald build up top, which should be able to prevent a lot of the damage on the side of Talon. I do like that a lot. It's gonna be very, very interesting. It's not something we see all that much. We saw it a little bit to try and counter, uh, I guess it was the Buzzwall meta, but it didn't really pop up. So I'm curious how it's gonna go. Look, it's just that shutdown potential there. Uh, maybe for that Espeon, getting that special uh, damage reduction there. But I mean, we have a little bird here who can't really do much. The pecking just isn't doing enough damage into Torn as that Slowbro. Yeah, it's gonna be so tanky, so hard to deal with. And 
they're not going to be able to be too aggressive, I think, with it. Uh, the Leafeon might be able to enable some sort of aggression, but it looks like they're now going to have to be on the back foot as four members of Talon are all up top. Yeah, but that was a great pushback from that Umbreon to lead those Wobblers and Altaria over to their side. That way they can get the secures. It's just a matter of whether we have Lucapo retreating on back, considering that red buff has just spawned for them. Um, just reset before those next objectives. Yeah, we also, ooh, nice wall. That's gonna at least force Mashio to kind of, uh, like, say, oh, well, I'll hit you one time, but they weren't able to retreat to exactly where they wanted to go. And that wall, I mean, this is an interesting pick. Russell's really not shown much, uh, shown up much day one, but day two, it's been looking a little bit better. We do have those Swabbles and Ataria spawning in about 10 seconds into that middle path. However, Kai is at such low HP, is able to grab themselves a berry. Nobody is there on time just yet, as they have that bird uh, prioritizing their stacks. And Yume just kind of hiding there, trying to get that final hit. Uh, but in the middle, it's not super contested. That's actually pretty surprising for the eight minute spawns to last this long, over 11 seconds, and only have two people trying to go for them. So. Tone's gonna not even take the entire thing as they're gonna be pushing, oh, very aggressively down here on bottom. He getting that KO, well, actually it looks like it was Dimashio, but winning that fight, I should say, taking down that tier one gold zone. And there's one bit of experience they've still got to hunt down here in the city. You gotta give them credit because they were able to do that math, getting that 19, but also get in that 30. That way they now have 107 points. However, show ends up getting caught, getting caught out, able to use their eject button over that crustal wall. Yeah, that, that's going to be really big is all the different mobility tools that we have to get over the Crustle Wall. There's not all that many, but there's going to be certainly a few really, really key ones on the team. So you Crustle Wall, you got to get past that. That's really scary. That is going to build a little bit of, uh, or stop the full push onto, I think, this goal zone. Give a little bit more time. He, though, dashing in, trying to jump onto Dylan, and that Unite's going to probably finish them off. Yeah, Mew is gone. Charizard is caught in a scramble there, not able to get themselves out. And this is going to give the opportunity for Fennel to go and dunk in some points, leaving it on 11. Russell puts up a wall to stop and interrupt that dunk. However, the 26 points does go in. All the meantime, we actually had Leafeon uh, downstairs securing themselves a Reggie Rock or Fennel. Reggie like equals, uh, Reggie or, Ice. Yeah, yeah, one of the Reggies, one of the basin yeah. Reggies. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't know which one's which. I'll figure it out. There's three of them. That's way too many to count. But uh, we are going to be trying to steal some of the experience in the center here as right now Fennel is just bullying Talon, pushing down their tier two on top with this red The defense is looking pretty strong, but maybe not strong enough as KYY is also going to be going down. Last one on the team. They can jump back, but that red is going in. You're not going to have a tier two goal zone to jump back to. That is three goal zones down on the side of Talon before the halfway mark. Having that home base wide open has the potential. However, Charizard dives over the walls, grabs that Zarina. However, they are able to sweep their way away. Uses a Unite move of their own and crushes them down, slamming them and taking them out. However, Mew has used that protection to try and protect the Crossle, but it unfortunately just isn't enough as we have more members of Talon crumbling. Yeah, Lance tried to unite, but as we're used to the Talon Unite running into a wall before it reaches any of the targets it specifically is trying to hit. And so continuing on and on, Fennel is just taking such good control of this match. They're pushing a little bit further forward, taking down one tier two, one tier one. They control the entire center area of this map. They're up by about, well, I don't know, 260 points. I guess 260, I don't know, six points, something like that. But this is just looking like completely their game. We're only at the halfway mark, and their levels are like two ahead almost across the board. They've got good positioning for potentially whichever objective they want to take. Things are looking great. Well, we've had them split on up and uh, prioritize these objectives. Three members down at the bot, two at the top. Um, but this is going to be risky for Talon here because this could be a uh, home base Reggie, so they're going to actually have to defend it. We're going to see Leafy on solo down that basement Reggie like we saw last time, making sure to trust their team to deal with Talon. Up in the top line. I like the fact that Talon is pushing really far forward to try and stop this Regilecki, like not even maybe let Fennel get to it. The uh, X is right there. It's going to be really nice. Just pushing everybody back. That Regilecki will go down in the favor of Talon. P getting caught a little bit, but the advantage of the mobility of choosing that move is so, so good, as you can see right there. Now they're going to be trying to push it in, try to get some points back. Big Unite in the back from Umbreon. KOI is going to do a nice 
uh, instead of shields and lands. Going to that is going to hit, not getting a whole amount of damage. In fact, two members down on the side of Talon as now they're having to run away. Two members left, Lance being one of them. And even as a fast bird, you cannot get away from Lucapo. No, you can just not outrun that Levion, able to get that KO. I mean, the thing is, as you mentioned, 364 to 48. Lucapro was also able to just starve Talon even more by taking that red buff. It looks like they have their eyes on the prize, being the blue one, and they end up taking it with their Razor Leaf too. Oh, this is just going downhill more and more and more. Looking for a way to get back in with Talon is looking, I mean, kind of impossible at this point. I mean, one thing that I will say, they do have the potential for a good amount of secure, but there's also a decent amount of secure on the other side. I mean, there's nothing going to be huge. There's no blaze against or anything like that, no single striker Shifus, but if you can flip, maybe you flip. At this point, you kind of have to do something as Talon is now down by over 300 points. So the problem is, even if you flip, you're going to have to get some KOs. Their counter scoring is going to just stop you from winning at all. But I feel like Ben will have all bases covered here. As the stars align straight down that minimap, they are not going to let them in at any choke point or any of those goals. We do have objectives spawning before the Rayquaza, so it'll be really interesting to see when it, whether any of these teams go and prioritize any of those or whether they're just going to wait in the bush for the Rayquaza to spawn. We're getting close to the two-minute mark, so we will find the answer to your question. This was not the answer that I thought it was going to be. They're going to push it on a tier one, maybe? No, it looks like Talon will be at least making sure that that Regilecki is not taken. But look at this rotation. Look at the rotation from Fennel. They're going all the way behind. They're trying to sneak. Maybe it's a back cap. Maybe it's a flank. It's going to be something. Yeah, making sure to take different positioning here, not get spotted. However, Talon are also circling them around. Levion has been exposed by the Mew. They are going to dive on in, but the Mystical Mirage was able to save Dylan there, and Lucapo is out of the picture. Is that too much confidence now? It's going to be a 5v4. They're going to be diving in. That wall is actually going to be detrimental so much to the side of Fano. They cannot escape. The slow oh. coming out is going to at least take down maybe that Charizard, if it can take a little more damage. No, it does get KO'd. Oh, the oh. block on the Unite from the Talon Flame with the wall. Unite coming out as well from the Serena. He's going to get the KO on Umbreon, but he is still just so, so low. Tone, the only one kind of healthy, is Mashu is going to come oh, back in with God. a big Unite. Yeah, catching out that Crustle, just trying to replace your HP. However, they end up getting taken down. Talon has decided to retreat, get that replenish. As we are about to head on into round two, resetting. I mean, all Unite moves have been used. So it's just a matter of seeing if they can get any Unite moves for the second round. At this point, I don't even think you have time to think. You've got to go all out. There's less than one minute left, and everybody on the side of Talon has to score. They've got to find the perfect initiation. But he waiting there, trying to see who's going to jump in first. They realize they can't take down the Umbreon that easily, not without a Unite. Unites are coming back. Charizard is getting theirs. We are going to see the Leafeon get theirs back as well. Those are going to be both huge ones for whatever the second oh. line is. In fact, we're seeing it start off and they're going to immediately burn down at least one member of Fennel. They are going to go for the flip on the Rayquaza. Everybody's scoring in the back. The home oh. goal zone of Talon. There's 610 points in. Rayquaza will go to the side of Talon, but do they have enough points to return the lead? They have to score 100 with everybody, and they might still be behind as more points go in to the home goal zone of Talon. 15 seconds left to go on the clock, but Fennel, they didn't even need to worry about that breakaway, so considering they were so far in the lead. Instead, they just dumped in all of their Aeos energy and still took the lead despite losing the breakaway. Uh, this is really interesting because now we've seen what is it? Three sets in a row that have been entirely almost based around just score and score at the end. It's very interesting to see where this meta has kind of gone, but. Let's go into our next draft and we'll see if anything is more score focused, less score focused, any more target bans in particular, or Shifu is getting taken out relatively quickly. And once again, Fennel clearly highly respecting that Mimikyu. Yeah, but another respect ban here. Talon is deciding to ban that Mew instead of picking it up themselves. Hooper, once again, locked in for Fennel. Do not want to let that supporter out on the field. Uh, yeah, that is, the Hoopa's been a huge part of a lot of teams winning today, and you just don't want to even give them that chance, not at all. So, I do like the fact that it's gone, but once again, you can really play around what supports you want to take once. At least one support has been 
taken. And picking up the Umbreon first is a really cool pick because you can still choose another one later on and your opponent can't assume that you will or assume that you won't. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Fennel answer back here with as they are shuffling through. Now, we saw so much lockdown from both of these teams. There's Charizard, the Zarina. Mm -hmm. um, but something we didn't see last match was this Blaziken. Yeah, it's really funny that we're seeing Blaziken first picked by Fennel when it went zero pick at all in the last game completely without even being banned. But Blaziken, obviously one of the strongest Pokemon in the game currently, if you watched any of Worlds this year. So on the other side, we're seeing some interesting choices. It looks like we're going to be stealing away the Slowbro, which was doing quite well for Tone. But what do you back it up with the Metagross? This is something we've been seeing a little bit more this weekend. Talon showing off with this Pokemon a lot. Yes, just being able to get in a bit of, bit more bulk, but also the Unite move to surround themselves around Fennel, maybe stop the Blaziken in the tracks. However, it is quite chunky, so it'll be interesting to see what their last two picks, whether they're going to go in for more range. I mean, range, Pikachu, um, something we have seen picked up a, a fair few times this weekend. We have. And mm. Currently, I don't know if it's going to stay the same way because we have three EXP shares, but Mashio is locked under the Pikachu with the EXP share as well. So one of these three Pokemon will probably not have it. Three would be pretty absurd. On the other side, we're going to see the Gyarados maybe last picked, going for, a, again, a little bit more of a brawling comp. They're going to have two very hard to take down uh, all rounders there, and then a little bit more of a back line this time, but also a little bit more of a front line with two defenders. And Charizard getting last picked is surprising. That is very surprising, and I guess it's a given there. Uh, you got a last pick if Talon aren't going to select it for themselves. Um, but we are going to have a few switchy roos here, uh, making sure to just finalize all of these items. So we're actually going to keep the experience share on the Pikachu this time um, and give the Trevenant the double stacks with the attack weight and the Aos cookie. So Ooh. something we have seen, I guess, Metagross, uh, not Metagross, uh, Mamoswine play. And I guess because Mew is banned, and Shio is going for that next attacker support style. <laughs> yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, we saw in Era not that long ago, in maybe the last set of big UCS tournaments where there was a lot of top path brawler trevenants, and it was so incredibly strong. There were a few nerfs and a few maybe buffs to some other Pokemon, so we saw it fall a little bit more out of favor, but it looks like we're bringing it back on the side of Fennel. And once again, they are only one game away from moving into the top four. Talon, they really have to fight to their last chance to be able to stay in this tournament. But it's looking really tough. I do believe they can do it. This new draft, we'll see if it can help them out. Yeah, it's going to be a matter of getting that Gyarados online, but also this Beldum turning into that Metagross as we are about to head on into our match. Can Talon take this match and bring it to a round three, Chef? They're going to have to, and we're going to be sending that Magikarp up top as expected. Bottom, actually, we're going to see the Torchic going. That's a little bit surprising, but, uh, you know, they're just full of surprises, I think, on the side of Fennel. Their meta has been one of the most interesting to actually watch. Lucapo already going up, trying to take out that Magikarp, doing a pretty good job of it, but they're not quite able to get that KO. Now it's going to do a lot of damage with Flail as well. Yes, they're going to just try and get that effort points up by getting those hits with the basic attacks, but also the splash, as you do have uh, Eevee going and dunking in two points of their own in the top half. Ooh, and the Electro Web, that's really why you're so scared of Pikachu early in the game. That move is so good. So many people say, like, I wish I could just keep it for the entire game. And it is true. But not able to quite get a KO with it. We got a few dunks in from both sides. Very small amounts of score. And then everybody backing up. I think the respect in this game is going to be pretty high. We're not going to see the super aggressive starts that we've seen in a few of the other sets. And they're just going to back up. They're going to wait. And especially, you don't want to give Lance an opportunity to evolve that Magikarp into a Gyarados. No, there is a lot on the line for Talon here, as they are going to send four members up in the top half to verse three. Try to secure as much experience as possible. It looks like we have uh, Mi Tang going in with that Zen Headbutt and Gyro Ball pick. Yeah, that's... Something that they've been doing, um, they were doing it earlier yesterday, and it was working out really well. It's just a very scary brawler, especially combined with the Espeon. That was one of the combinations that they were using. The Unites together between those two are absolutely terrifying. So I'm excited to wait a little bit longer into the game for them to actually get those Unites and show off how they can coordinate them. Yes, but coordination is key as we have uh, Shio and Lucapo trying to shut down Kai. However, they're able to... No, they're not. They end up getting caught out by the Electro-Wed Thunder combo. 
Ooh, that is so hard to deal with early on. I mean, that is just the path winner, one could say. Dylan and Sink, they're just going to be uh, kind of trolling around the center area, trying to find some experience. And uh, Tone is going to be where they're raiding for them. Already a Charizard, already doing a lot of damage. They go for the experience. They are going to get KO'd in return. Dylan will be running away, trying to just escape with their lives at this point, as it's looking like Fennel is taking a little bit of an early lead. This might not be able to score until maybe now. Cool, but they put a lot of trust into Lance here to try and defend this top T1 pad. But with three members there, they're not able to do anything. And that is going to be a seven over dunk. Yeah, that's, uh, oh, that was actually some score in the bottom as well as that was happening. I was about to say that's a pretty big lead, but it shrunk relatively quickly. Good reaction from Talon, realizing, okay, a lot of them are top. They're not going to defend bottom. Let's take this immediately. And now we're getting close to the first Reggie spawns. There's a good amount of health missing, I would say, on the side of Talon. They do have some berries. They don't want to take them quite yet in case they have to retreat and defend. So they're going to sit on that pad, get some healing, and almost everybody in the game is meeting down here on bottom. So look, there is a heart... Uh a lot on the line here as we have Charizard going in and diving and taking down that Umbreon and they're going to push on forward as the Reggie Rock is getting poked at. However, Charizard Don is quite low as we have Meetang diving on with a Chiro Ball trying to get some shields. However, the shield just weren't enough for them. They end up getting wiped, but we have Espeon saving themselves with a Unite move of their own. Fennel are looking quite low in HP. They are. Every single one is low. They're trying to burn down Red Rock, but instead they're going to get jumped on. And this Umbreon is going to be able to at least take one KO. Or maybe they didn't, actually. I thought they did, but it looks like they were able to just barely escape, get out of there. Red Rock needs to get last hit. Who can actually take it? They're not only going to take the Red Rock, they're going to take the Umbreon as well on the side of Fennel, going from a very small lead to an extremely large lead. As this Tier 1 goal zone is going to have a lot of points put into it. They're not going to be able to get that 40 in that the Luka Pole was holding, but they're still up by about 150 points and now their level lead is up by two. It's not just that bottom goal zone. We had Blazik and soloing that Reggie Alecki and we had Ton coming in right at the last second to go and break it down. The fighting isn't going to stop here as Dylan is trying to work their way away but they end up getting oh. shut down by the focus blast from Blazik and a three KO streak. They are now at level 11. Three KO streak from P, amazing stuff. And yeah, two level 11s, not just one. Three, three level 11s, yeah, let's keep going. Somebody level up twice in a row. But they're also getting some more expense off that. Oh, now back only to two because now we're 12 on charge. And now down to one. Let's keep counting number 11. Basically, the point here is this is a ridiculous lead. Uh, there is a little bit of aggression on the bottom side from Talon. They're trying to take this tier one goal zone, but what can you do? Especially when it's Pokemon like Blaziken and Charizard that have the lead on you. It doesn't matter if you're a tanky Metagross, you're getting melted. It doesn't matter if you've got some self-sustain as, as uh, Gyarados, you're getting melted. It just doesn't matter. And look at this, they see any sort of opposition, they're like, we just have to give up. Yeah, they're just going to pretend, uh, protect that pad. But the thing is, the risk, the Reggie Alecki, 10 seconds left to spawn. If Fennel grab this, that is going to be heading towards that home base because they have no protection. Talon are aware of this, so they're going to send all of their recruits up into the top path to try and shred it down themselves. Well, they are doing a great job of it. That's going to be Regilecki going down immediately, and we see that on the side of Fennel. They decide not to go and free the steal. They're trying to defend, but big double, or big start. Single Unite aside the bounce, and now the Unite from the Metagross. That's going to be a really hard to defend situation, but Lucapo solo with the Phantom oh. Forest has so much much HP, so much healing, getting no. double berry, still alive, finally getting KO'd. And the Regilecki, most importantly, going in. So even the support of the teammates on the side of Fennel will not be able to stop that. Oh, the maneuverability. Unfortunately, Fluxone was just not enough to stop them. We have Blaziken going on in. Charizard going on in with the Unite move. However, they quickly get shut down once again. Lance diving straight onto that Pikachu. Two KO streak for them. Unfortunately, Yumi wasn't uh, close enough to provide some eggs. And Lance going for even another. They are starting to pop off level 13. First one in the game for going from a huge level lead on the side of Fennel to now Lance being far in the lead. Well, now not far in the lead as we see another level 13 on the side of Fennel. This is looking like a much closer match than just a few seconds ago. The points lead not super significant. One minute, 20 seconds left to the final stretch. Le level is 
Still slightly in the advantage of Fennel, but just barely. And that Gyarados really popping off. I think this is a really smart move from Talon, not wanting to risk utilizing all of the Unitas. They had a lot of wild Pokemon on their side, so just trying to hit those power spikes. However, Fennel are aware of this. They're going to try and secure these birds for themselves, using a little wish to heal them. They need to play it safe. There's a minute left, and another Reggie Alecky that will spawn in 20 seconds. Once again, this is Fennel. Fennel's chance to move on into the top four, and Talon's only chance to save their tournament life and they've got to win another one on top of this so they have everything on the line everything is being built back up they're getting into a relatively safe position but oh a move in from Lucapo that might be a mistake they are going to be able to horn leech out try to get back to safety and a lot of damage going on to Umbreon sink down to or sorry Kai down to about one third life and they're going to have to back up that Regilecki is getting threatened. The fight might happen here for Rayquaza as RBX now being hunted down, taking so much damage. Everybody taking a lot of damage. Unite coming out from the Charizard. Unite coming out from the Pika, oh, from the Espeon. Everybody in a row, but no KOs going to the side of Fennel. One already on the side of Talon. That's going to be two. They're hunting for three Lance. The real highest damage on their team needs to escape, but they will not. No, and they are down for 25 seconds, which means Fennel have the chance to go and shred down the Rayquaza. However, they need to try and deal with the Umbreon who has popped their Unite move, not able to get any shielding of their own as we have them pushing on forth, seeing if they can get another capture, but the slow beam onto the Charizard. They have been wiped out as Rayquaza is now at half HP. Oh, this is looking like it might be turning the other way. Gyarados just respawning, not going to be there in time for the fight. So the curse from the, uh, the Trevor is going to be gigantic as two members now of Talon are very low. Two members are KO. Dylan running away, trying to just escape. Lance coming back into the fight. But you're the only one left. Rayquaza isn't low. You don't have a chance to steal. You've got to escape. Got to try to regroup. But you're not going to get that chance. Fennel has a chance to take this Rayquaza. Slowbro's getting a little bit close, but can't get there in time as Pikachu. Machio taking not only a 4KO streak, but the Rayquaza on a support Pikachu. That is experience share, Pikachu. The amount of damage they were able to do with that. Now they're going to go and dunk in some points. And unfortunately, I don't think there's a lot that Talon can do here to try and defend as we already have Slowbro getting wiped on out. Oh, this is looking rough. I mean, not only do you need to defend, you need to get the team wipe, you need to turn around, run to the other side of the map, and right now you're the one who's getting wiped. Three members probably not going to be back up. Four members probably not back up in time to even reach the other side. Only poor Slowbro left going back into their goal zone, and that looks like there's no more chance. Just sitting outside as Venel is looking at their victory through, uh, I guess, the, I don't know, whatever the, the wall is there. They're saying, you know what? We got you. Good games. One final fight just for good measure, but with 10 seconds left, this one is going to be bringing Fennel to a 2-0 victory and into our top four at Worlds. The first top four that we have here today at the World Championships in Honolulu. The crowd goes wild for them. They are also celebrating their victory. And that was a top tier victory indeed, as they just created.